Rhode Island and Providence Plantations nowadays may seem modern, as if what I saw over several annual or biannual visits, there is the Wellington Condominium Community Center, Holiday Inn Hotels, Dunton Donuts, Dallas Lemonade, and Amazing Beaches. However, none of this was there before the Revolutionary War, being colonial times, meaning there was never a Dallas Lemonade or Dunton Donuts or Holiday Inns. Back then, they had Roger Williams, founder of the state, charters, religious freedom, and slave trades. Now, I'll go deeper into the details of this past. To list all of the sources in the raid, we have Roger Williams by Edward S. Dostied, A. Roger Williams by Jesse Vistermont, A. Roger, Roger Williams and the Creation of the American Soul by John M. Berry, B. Finding Providence by Avi, F. The Rhode Island Colony by Kevin Cunningham, D. The Colony of Rhode Island by Susan Whitehurst, F. A Constitution.org copy of the Charter, A. And all other internet sources combined, F. The three after because the one by Avi was fiction, or so it seems fiction, and it had little actual information, and the rest were not original sources and had nothing. Cunningham scored a D minus because he failed to list facts that are important and listed less important ones. The three A's were because those sources aced it, having the most important information only. John M. Berry scored a B minus because he was too long. Williams was banished from Massachusetts. He first sailed aboard the Mayflower, and Massachusetts strictly required every person to believe in the Puritan religion. Williams advanced the notion that everyone should have religious freedom, and it led to his own exile. He also believed these persons should follow their own conscience, as all of the eight or so including my main source, Roger Williams by Edward S. Dostied. While just Dostied says he sailed 30 miles south in a poor canoe in stormy seas, all seven or so others state that he walked in the wilderness for 30 or so miles. All the sources meet up at the point where Williams eventually found a settlement belonging to Indians. As he had practiced the Indian language during his spare time, they welcomed him. He called the settlement, Providence, as stated in about half the sources, named after the fact that he needed God's providence in order for him to find it. He said at one point, something like this, I will find God's providence. Providence is God's protective care under God's will as he believes. He was soon in charge of the settlement as well. Later he bought his own land from Native American leader Massasoit. William's banishment led to him founding Providence. After his banishment from Massachusetts, many things happened. He was a leader in Providence during his seven years there. According to Dosti, as all the sources corroborate when he was there, a rule was signed about a majority vote. More specifically, whatever the majority decides to do, it will be done. A second thing he did was probably the most logical choice, especially for Roger Williams' background, and it was to ensure religious freedom among all citizens. It was the first time that there was ever religious freedom in any settlement. The religious freedom, additionally, attracted more banished men and women from Massachusetts and a unique group called the Quakers, who thought no one needed church to pray, and they were called Quakers for shaking a lot in prayer. And finally, his colony soon built three other cities, Portsmouth, Newport, and Warwick. Newport and Providence were essential trading sites later on. Williams led a good settlement 37 years there. In 1643, Williams was sent on a mission, as all sources going up to this point in time state. His mission was to sail to England and get a charter for his colony. He arrived in London during the Civil War in England, and because of this, at the time, England had no king. The absence of England's king did not stop him, however, as with help from four of his old friends, he was able to get Parliament, who was in charge in the absence of the king, to, and out of 34 to 32 vote, give him a charter. He succeeded to be to his four old friends from when he was born in England, including Sir Henry Vane and Oliver Cromwell. This is referenced in the Constitution.org translation of it, also a link to the Yale Law School's Lillian Goldman Law Library, and where as divers well-affected and industrious and blended inhabitants of the towns of Providence, Portsmouth, and Newport in the trash aforesaid, have adventured to make a nearer neighborhood and society. He sailed home with his charter in 1644. Williams' mission was successful. Rhode Island had more future than just the Quakers going through revolution, finally. To sum it all up, Williams' foundation did everything that happened so far. But everything for the remainder of this movie will be after the Roger Williams era. This is all according to that last source, Rhode Island by Jesse McDermott. In the 1770s, the British started to turn on Providence plantations. They sent ships to enforce the Sugar Act to make sure no ships imported sugar and molasses without permission, as sugar and molasses was a lot of Rhode Island's income. They sent one ship, more famously, at least in Rhode Island, called the Gatsby. One night, ships snuck up on it and burned it. Today, there is an annual parade in eastern Rhode Island celebrating the burning of the Gatsby. There were no major revolutionary war battles. However, 6,000 British troops stormed against Newport's 300. While George Washington put 6,000 more troops in Rhode Island to make sure they wouldn't move forward, they stayed there, but it also meant 6,000 fewer troops in other important places where real battles were going on. Rhode Islanders formed an alliance with France to get rid of them, only to be ruined by a hurricane where the French had to go back to Boston for repairs and were never heard from again, as the Americans survived on the mainland. A lot of history happened on top of Williams' framework. In conclusion, Rhode Island more specifically Roger Williams, was successful. It was all because of Roger Williams. He is the champion of religious liberty in the world.